want to acknowledge the founder uh, and the progenitor of this movement. Oh, there he is, way back there, Apostle Ashley Estrada. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise for him. This mighty man of God that has a heart of God for women. I, I was just in another conference and uh, we spoke on, the, the name of the conference was Daughters of the Left Ahead. And man, I got, I could see why you would want a t-shirt, uh, but I agree with your wife, you probably shouldn't wear it. Uh, uh, because Moses was such a man, he was a man that honored women and we knew that from uh, the Daughters of the Left Ahead story. He was a man that listen to the women in a society that didn't really regard women, but he as a man of God and connected to God, listen and thank God for Moses' leadership, amen? Thank God for men that will defy cultural and religious society to hear the voice of God. So I thank God for you men of God. Hallelujah. Yes, my husband was. He loved women. He loved women. And he actually was one of the first people um, uh, in uh, the culture of the kingdom to raise up women. Our church was one of the first churches that would have a husband and wife lead a church. That wasn't common back in the 80s. It was pastors. Uh, and, and you all have no idea how much uh, opposition my husband had. They, they were talking about him on the radio saying he had his Jezebel wife <laughs> up on the stage, you know, because he was a lover of women. So I, I thank God and he heard from God. So I'm just giving God glory for all of you, for kingdom life, for the pastors here, pastors Kenneth and Lynette. Come on, Estrada, this beautiful edifice and all of the great hospitality, all of the AM family, all of these mighty men and women of God that's here. I don't want to not call anybody's name, and I know that, uh, and here is somebody calling me. I can't talk to you. <laughs> and so I'm just honored to see all of you here. I'm going to be real brief. I'm, I'm going to cut this short. I know that we are over our time. So I'm just, and anyway, uh, a Pastor, y'all really kind of wrong for putting me last. Because all of you great women of God have talked about every woman already. <laughs> so I'm just going to be a repeat. <laughs> Amen. But I am going to just... Um, condense and, and, and allow the Holy Spirit to just sh tell me which way to take this. I do want to say this, and I, I, I remember the conversation with Pastor Marcia. I have been, this is something I live for, is the power of women. Actually, those who know me, and I, uh, I, I want to thank God, I forgot for my Chicago people that are here. Come on, wave your hand. Uh, Pastor Sheila and Elder Amina, we got some other people coming. Um, thank you all for your support. And they can tell you that I have been preaching about women for years. This is my passion. The, what part of my call is to empower women. And when I think of the voice for the voiceless, at least for me growing up, women, I'm talking about from my experience, women didn't have much of a voice in the church. When I was growing up, women were basically acknowledged for the fried chicken. <laughs> Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. I'm saying we, it, it, it really wasn't, and, and, and the most that we were really presented to be were missionaries. There wasn't a whole lot. I grew up in the Baptist church. I'm saying that's my experience, so please don't anybody get offended. This was my experience. And, and then there were, and I was raised up among a lot of misogynistic men who had a, um, a view of the Bible, which really made me begin to start to study for myself. Because how many of you know that sometimes the church has cultures that's not in the Bible? <laughs> And one of the things that was said when I was growing up was that, let me give you an example, then I'm going to move on. Um, the men would say, well, God doesn't tell, won't tell a woman nothing that he don't tell me first. 
That, that, that was a common belief that was passed down that in other words, woman, in other words, wife, God will never tell you anything that he doesn't tell the head first. That's what they said. But then when I started reading the Bible, I said, well, please explain to me why it was the wife that God said, I can't, is it Rachel or Rebecca? I always get them mixed up. But he, he told the woman, there's two nations in your belly. He didn't, he didn't tell the husband. He told the woman. Come on. And, and she was the one who had the knowledge from God of who was going to rule. Y'all ain't with me. Now, again, uh, and th don't lose me, man, because I, I'm, coming, I'm coming back around. I'm coming back around. <laughs> I'm coming back around. And then he, he, when I looked and I saw uh, um, uh, Samson's uh, mother, when God filled her womb, well, what happened was actually he prayed, but then the angel came to her. And I said, now, if you have this philosophy, how can it be opposite? Because those are two examples where the spirit of God came to the woman first. Y'all better help me here. So what am I saying? And so sometimes that, um, you know, that I, I suffered a lot of uh, persecution because I'm talking, I'm going back 20 years ago. All right. When I began to study the word and preach this and I was called a feminist and I agree with um, Pastor Lynette, there is no room for a feminist in the kingdom of God. And I didn't and I did not preach and teach it from a, a, a place of, that didn't bring honor to the man. I'm, I'm going to talk a lot about the honor to the man, believe it or not. Y'all know. Stay. That's why I said stay with me, man. Stay with me. Okay, um, but I didn't teach it and preach it that way. They just didn't want to hear the truth. They didn't want to hear the truth. So this is something that I have been born for. I've been raised up for this, so I'm so honored to be here because I believe in women because I know from the beginning of time. And let me say this for those women who also have a call to women. I want to uh, refer a book that I read a long time ago. I think I need to pull it out again. It's called All the Women in the Bible because I used to study that book because it lists all the women in the Bible. Those that don't have a name from the certain woman, I have studied every woman in there. And I'll tell you that when you do that, that you're going to get a revelation of who you are. Come on, I want you to say, I am a woman of substance. I even want the men, as we make these declarations, remember prophetically, you're a woman because a woman is the bride. A woman, come on, the church is the lamb's wife. The, uh, the church is a woman. So that includes everybody prophetically. From the beginning of time, the woman has been the key to the fates of mankind. We, we've talked about all these women already that have impact us, impacted us, that all of these speakers have already spoken of. But even in the natural, we know all of the women that have changed history. So don't ever let anybody tell you, don't you ever believe that you are not significant. I like to tell the housewives, listen, don't you ever be afraid to go back to your high school reunion because you've been a housewife. You've been raising kings. Come on here. You have no idea what substance you have placed inside of your children and what they are to become. So don't you allow the enemy to make you believe you are less than because somebody is sitting in a boardroom in a corporation. Come on, people of God. Come on, y'all. I need. Come on, women. Why, why y'all looking at me like that? Hallelujah. Nations have fallen because of women. Wars have been won because of women. Some of the most guarded secrets can be brought out. Come on here. Through a woman. Didn't Delilah teach us that? See, Delilah taught us so much about the power of a woman that a man whose wisdom will never be seen like it, it wasn't before it or after it, 
wisdom didn't save him from a woman. You better help me here. That's the kind of influence a woman can have. That's why we have to steward it properly. Because as much as influence we have, how many of y'all know that's how much hell we can raise? It can be either positive or negative. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. So we got to be careful, as Pastor Marcia said, on whether or not we use this substance for the kingdom or against, against the kingdom. But we all have some kind of substance. The issue is whether we're using it, whether it's positive or whether it's negative. All right. And we see that all throughout the Bible. And I like to always talk about just in general, the prophetic meaning of women. Women are mentioned uh, uh, just like, uh, which I'm going to talk about a little bit from uh, Proverbs 8. Uh, the, the, the spirit of wisdom is presented as a woman. But also, I can't just uh, hone in on woman being a uh, Wisdom being a woman, and I talk about that also foolishness is called a woman too. See, that's the balance, right? She's called a woman too, so we have to be careful that we're not foolish. The, 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 the Bible talks so much about our power, but it talks about our foolishness too. The Bible talks about the brawling woman, the contentious woman. The psalmist said, I'd rather be on the rooftop than to be stuck in the house with a contentious woman. Y'all better help me here. So women, we got to watch ourselves. <laughs> we got to watch our attitudes. We got to watch the woman. God said, what kind of substance? Pastor Nicole said, come on, that we are. Do you know we're releasing that substance in the atmosphere? That's why sometimes men and women of God, it's hard to have a move of God because of the substance that's sitting here. Y'all ain't talking to me. Come on here. When we come in angry, come in bitter, come on, come in rejected, come in offended, and then we try to have a move of God with all of this substance. So we have to evaluate what substance, come on, ask your neighbor, what substance are you working with today? Come on, what, what substance are you, what substance did you bring in here today? Y'all tired, y'all need y'all to wake up. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm here to encourage you women, but I, I try to bring a balance um, because I, I, I go strong on our power, so I just want to I want to make sure I'm balanced in, in my teaching because I'm not a feminist. I'm a womanist. Yeah. Amen. And so that's the responsibility. And I've learned in these years I've been on the earth that balance is necessary. Yeah. And the scriptures say uh, there are four things that the earth can't take. And one of the four things that the scripture says the earth can't take is an unloved wife. Oh, I'm talking to somebody today. See, it's something about a woman when she don't feel loved, she becomes a terror. Oh, brothers, you better hear this in the natural and hear it in the spirit. When we don't feel loved, you are going to feel it. The Bible said the earth can't take it. Now how you going to take it? So what does that say? It's important to love your wives if Christ loved the church. Y'all help me here. God is trying to tell us we better learn how to love the woman. Right. Help me, Jesus. Y'all better help me today. I'm talking metaphorically too. We better learn how to love the church. Yeah. And we got all these folks talking about they ain't going to church no more and trying to minimize the church. Oh we got to know how to love the church. Yeah. 
Because the church has the substance. Because she is the woman. She is the bride of Christ. And we have to recognize the substance in the woman. You have to see that parallel that even as we, do you understand that even as those would want to diminish the woman, it parallels with those diminishing the church? Because the church is Jesus' bride. Y'all help me today. Come on. This is a prophetic house, right? Hallelujah. And when you see the perspective of the power and favor of women, you, some of you heard me say this before. So it, you see, and as I was studying, I, I saw Moses had six women deliver him before he delivered anybody. I saw all the things in the scripture that these women already talked about with Esther and even how Jesus acknowledged a lot of women in the word. He acknowledged a woman who gave more than the men because she gave out her poverty. He acknowledged a woman who had the alabaster box. And then the Bible says that he said that there was going to be a memorial given to her because of what she sacrificed. Come on, he didn't say that about anybody else. Y'all help me today. So I'm glad we're having this conference because women's conferences are biblical. They're biblical. And that's one of the messages I started preaching over 20 years ago is because back then there really wasn't a lot of women's conferences. Not, in, not where I grew up. They had Women's Day. But there wasn't really a lot of women's conferences like this. Titus 2 says, let the older women likewise are to be reverent in their behavior, not slanderers or addicted to much wine, but teachers of good. And this way they can train the young women to what? Love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, managers of their households, kind and submissive to their own husbands so that the word of God will not be dis credited. We see here in Titus 2 that the Bible lets us know basically what I re just read is that it takes women of substance in order to raise up women of substance. You cannot give something that you don't have. And I like to say this especially as uh, when I'm coaching that in order for us to really be a whole women or women of substance you need to have the three these three dimensions you need to be poured into and to receive substance you need to have somebody parallel that you also uh, uh, are getting sharpened from but you also need to pour out so you need to be poured into you need to have someone on your own level that's sharpening you but you also then need to pour out that's how you become a whole person I'm talking about complete right because if you're getting poured into, but you're not pouring out. Lord, help me. Didn't the woman of God talk about giving? And we're not just talking about giving possessions. We're talking about giving time. We're talking about taking time to train, spending time, come on, with your nieces and nephews that may need some training. Instead of talking about them, why don't you take them for a weekend, come on, and start pouring into them and train them. Instead of talking about how bad they are, how unruly they are, why don't you find a way to pour some substance into them? That's what women of substance do, all right? So we see from Titus 2 that women learn from women. God ordained it. And look at all the things that women teach women. They, listen to this. Are y'all catching it? It says, teach them how to love their husbands. Yes. Yeah. Come on. So a woman teaches a woman how to love her husband. Oh, some women. Uh, come on, women. I, I, come on here. How many know you got to sometimes talk to, to women about about the, I remember a lot of this came about because years ago, uh, my I would always have a lot of women coming to the altar crying, and and whenever a woman's crying, normally it was about her husband. <laughs> my husband, I don't know what I'm up to. He don't even pray. He don't have Bible study with the kids. I can't tell you how many times I've had that conversation with women, and I told them the same thing. 
what Pastor Lynette already alluded to, that first of all, you need to establish, I didn't say substance, but that's what it uh, relates to. You need to establish your own identity. That's number one. And you need to begin to work on you. You're not responsible for him. You're responsible for you. And so it's important for you. I want you to get down in that Bible. And I would use woman of God, the Shunammite woman. I said, because if you look at the Shunammite woman, the Bible says she was wealthy. Come on here. It, it, it shows you that she had prophetic insight. That she said to her husband, let us build a room. I said, I want you to concentrate on getting your identity that only comes through Christ Jesus and I promise you as you do that things are going to shift things are going to change and at the end of the day listen God is faithful to his word so when you work on yourself because your own identity our identity for everyone this isn't just women Identity is the key to our substance. The word substance, when you look at the Greek word, it actually translates to be your support, what holds you up, Come on, what sustains you. None of us can be sustained if we haven't identified who we are in Christ Jesus. Our identity is our support system. So you got to know who you call to, what your gifts are, come on, what your purpose is. If you and I don't know that, we have no substance. We're not going to be able to stand. Amen. Are y'all with me? All right. So we see in Titus 2, all the things that women do for women, what the church does for the church. Come on, that we we teach same thing. I want you to hear with two sets of ears prophetically. Love your husband. How to love God. The church teaches the the bride because the church is a bride, but you're a bride. You're the temple, and the church teaches us how to love our husband. My God. So all these things are prophetic. So you see that, how to run your house, how to be pure. But let me just run through this real quick. I want to just mention this, and I'm going to go fast so I can end this early. Wisdom was the first lady. In Proverbs 8, study it on your own. You see, a whole, we can't read all that because of time. But the spirit of wisdom is presented as a woman. I like to say that she was the first lady, Pastor Marcia. Because if you read here, I'm going to skip over it real quick. But if you read here, it talks about in verse 1, does not wisdom cry. She stands at the top of the place and she cries at the gate. Unto you I call men to the simple. I want you to understand. And she talks about all the words that come out of her mouth. She begs us in verse 10 to receive her instruction uh, because wisdom is better than rubies. She says she dwells with prudence. Then she talks about how the fear of the Lord belongs to wisdom. Come on. The counsel is wisdom. That by me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me princes rule. I love them that love me. Riches and honor are with me. Woman wisdom. My fruit is better than gold. I lead in the way of righteousness. That I may, uh, I want to read verse 21. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures nothing most of us know that out of wisdom the scriptures say come riches and wealth and honor so as uh, pastor Nicole talked about substance is both natural and spiritual she talked about faith our faith is substance and it is from the faith of God that actually uh, uh, out of when you gain the substance that comes from God, the substance that comes from faith, then what happens? Then along with that, you have wisdom. Then that substance begets the substance in the natural. Because out of wisdom, out of faith, will bring glory and honor and riches and power. 
So substance begats substance. Say that with me. Substance begats substance. So you are going to birth or have fruit if you have substance like we've been talking about today. Now, it might take some time. It's going to be a journey. But out of substance will birth substance because that is the power of the kingdom. That's the pattern of the kingdom that every seed can only produce out of its own what? On, out of its own kind. Now, listen, and, uh, 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 I'm still talking about Proverbs 8. This is the part I want to get to talking about the woman. She says in verse 22, the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth. When he prepared the heavens, I'm skipping around, verse 27. When he established the clouds, verse uh, 28, this is wisdom saying, I was here when all this was done. When he gave to the sea his decree, when he appointed the foundation, I want to focus on verse 30. Then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. I wanted to focus on that because we see here prophetically that the spirit of wisdom stood by the side of God before anything was made. That's why I said that wisdom was the first lady because wisdom is, is referred to as a she, right? Now, we know that that spirit of wisdom didn't come on its own, didn't operate by itself. This is where, this is where I'm going to be, the brother's going to be with me here. <laughs> the spirit of wisdom didn't operate by herself. Wisdom was pulled out of God. Y'all better help me here. Because the pattern of a woman of substance is that, that the wisdom, the spirit comes out of the patriarch, comes out of the father. I lost some of the women there. The spirit of wisdom was pulled out of God and stood beside him. And he had a woman beside him. Lord, y'all better help me. See, the first woman wasn't Eve. The first woman was wisdom. And see, if you really understand the law of first mention women, that's why you should never be without wisdom. Because the essence of a woman should be wisdom. Come on, church. I'm talking to the church, too. Right? And so God pulled wisdom out, and wisdom stood by his side. I believe that's the same pattern that when he looked at Adam and Saul, y'all ain't helping me. Somebody know where I'm going. And Saul, come on here, that there was not a suitable mate for Adam. Then he said, let me do what I did from the beginning, and I'm going to pull a woman out of his side and set her right next to him. So he pulled a woman out of the side of a man. And then I believe when Jesus was on the cross and he was pierced in his side, that was representative of the church. His bride, come on here, was now set up to be pulled out of the side of Jesus Christ. See, the pattern of a woman is that we really don't have no virtue unless we come from the Father. That's why, oh, oh brothers, y'all should have said amen. Our virtue comes from the Father. That's why there's no such thing as no big-headed, loud-mouthed women who denounce or dishonor men. That is not the spirit of God. That's the spirit of Jezebel because the word shows us where our virtue comes from. That's why when the woman who had an issue
issue of blood, pressed our way out and touched Jesus. He said, virtue has left me because we get our virtue from the presence of God, from God our Father, and that's where it comes from. That's why women without fathers are something to be dealt with. Because they're missing the virtue that comes from knowing how to honor a man, how to love a man, how to respect a man, how to talk to a man. Come on here. Without feeling like you're less than. I thank God. Listen, I was brought up with strong men. That's why I'm a strong woman. But I had to honor them. I, I didn't flip in my mouth with them. These were men that didn't play with you. But I got my virtue from them. All the women in my family are strong women. But we love God. And we understand how to honor God because we understand the honor that belongs to the patriarch. Y'all ain't talking to me. Oh, y'all quiet up in here. All right. Is it time for me to stop? I can stop here. Because I... <laughs> Lord have mercy. Come on, women. Our virtue comes from understanding this. The daughters of Zalepha had understood it. Those are my girls. I've been preaching on them for years. I remember when I first started preaching on them, most pastors had never heard of them. They were like, who are they? Where's that? <laughs> had never studied it. You skip right over. See, and I told y'all about the men I was around. I could see why they skipped over it. Because then you'd have to rethink your philosophy. Come on here. When you see that God made a law and then changed it. Based on women who understood this principle. They represent the principle I just showed you. When, I'm not going to turn to the scripture, but I hope you know enough about it. If not, go back and read it later. Numbers 27. But these women, because the law stated, the law that God had put out, that the women couldn't get the land. Come on, somehow these women of substance got together and said, wait a minute. Uh, and I believe it was because of their relationship with God. How many of you know when you know a person, come on, when you, you spend time with a person, y'all have heard me say this, then you understand the exception that might have to be made. Come on, based on this situation, this was an exceptional situation. This was a situation where the law didn't have any provision for this situation. Come on, where there were no sons. And so they had enough virtue, they had enough wisdom that they didn't come before a, 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 a um, patriarchal society. Uh, uh, they've already, um, Pastor Lynette already told you about what kind of society this was. You got to remember, the, the voice of a woman was just a little bit more valued than the voice of a child. Most would have believed that in this, this was a congregation. This was a, uh, the setup of that was that Moses had called a meeting. God had Moses call a meeting and it's estimated over a million people were there. And this was mainly the men. So they had to push past. Y'all well, well, better help me here. Over a million folk in a society where they didn't look upon them as anything in a society when they took a census the woman and the children weren't even counted i'm not even counted as a person y'all better help me here and i got the nerve to push past all these men and go and get counsel with the man of god and challenge a law that god made himself what kind of woman of substance is that I'm here for, to encourage some of you who you trying to say it look impossible. You are listening to the devil. I'm here to tell you it's a lie. Push past every lie. Push past what 
Google says. Come on here. Stop referencing Google and get before God and get what he's saying to you. Because these women pushed past all that, came to Moses. Come on here and say it. But this is what I'm talking about, virtue, understanding the patriarch, having wisdom. They didn't come there saying like some of us, look, women ought to get the land just like the men. We want, the, we want God, we want Moses to say, women get the land just like the man. That's not how they came. You know why? Because they had wisdom. They had a strategy. They knew they was in a patriarchal society. So what did they do? They came to the patriarchs on the name of a patriarch. They said, why should our father's name Woo. Come on, get this prophetically. You don't come in your name. You come in his name. You come in the Father's name. When you come in the Father's name, come on here. You're going to get some laws changed. Some things are going to change in your house. Come on here. You're going to see the turnaround when you come in the name of the Father. See, feminists want to come in their name. But you ain't getting nowhere coming in your name. If you got some sense. That's what that word sober means in Titus 2. It really means to bring to your senses. God wants y'all to have some sense around here. Come on here and honor the Father. Come on, get your virtue. Come on, approach that situation in your house with wisdom. Approach it with honor. Come on, come another direction. Humble yourself. Come on, learn how to talk from the throne of God, from the throne of wisdom. Know that you're not giving nothing up. Because you approach things the right way. Hallelujah. Come on, say, I am a woman of substance. I'm going to stop.